Welcome to Breathing with Beerman, the podcast, a Princetonian Now Media Group production. As always, our aim is to educate, inform, entertain, and tell you, my people out there, what's trending. Please listen to Breathing with Beerman, the podcast on Apple iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, YouTube. Patrick, my producer, has put us on so many things. Uh, I can't keep count. Who is our guest? I'm excited. She's a scholar, political activist, former two-term mayor of Montgomery, that's New Jersey Township. She's also the first female Muslim mayor serving anywhere in the United States. And now she's running in 2021 for the New Jersey 16th District Assembly seat. Please welcome, I hope I get this name right, I've been practicing, Sadaf Jafir. Is that correct? Sadaf Jaffer. Jaffer, the yes. Welcome. Thank you so thank much. Thank you for coming on. Um, well, we'll start with the basic ones. What is your vision? What are your skills that you bring in and your vision of you win this seat? Absolutely. So we are in a very difficult time. We are just emerging, hopefully, from a pandemic. We suffered through a traumatic four years of a Trump presidency. And I think that all of our communities are looking to heal and move forward. So my vision is really of prosperity and justice for all, that we create prosperity in central New Jersey and throughout the entire state that is equitable. Make sure that we have access to opportunities for people from minority communities, from those who haven't reaped the benefits of um, our economic system right now. And then definitely promoting civil and human rights. That's really my passion and what got me into activism. And that activism is what inspired me to then pursue elected office to be able to make decisions that are in line with those values. Mm -hmm. And I think finally, it's addressing the COVID-19 pandemic and pandemic pre preparedness in as equitable a manner as possible, making sure that frontline workers are provided with their vaccines, with protections, uh, with safe working conditions, and that we really are able to emerge from this stronger than we were before. Right. Well, that sounds good. What what, you, what skills though, like from your from being mayor of Montgomery, how does those skills transfer to producing what you said equity? I guess jobs. I've read your platform. You talk about job creation and everything. How would you go about that? Yes. So, in Montgomery, I think it is useful to have a background in local government because you've seen how things work on the ground. Um, what issues are people facing? I think one of the major struggles that a lot of people in Montgomery and beyond face was how to navigate the unemployment system, for example, um, the need for food aid. We had a lot more uh, people coming to the food pantry in Montgomery. Thankfully, we had the community step up, but it showed that there are gaps where we're not providing people with the food aid that they need. Ultimately, it's wonderful to donate to food pantries, but we shouldn't need them as much if we were providing them people with the state and federal aid that they really do need. So those are all the gaps that I would want to work on filling. Um, another issue that we faced was that undocumented people in particular were fearful to come to the food pantry or to get the food aid that they needed. So we need to make sure that undocumented people in our state are able to access the pandemic aid, food aid, uh, health insurance, all of the other protections that the rest of our community demands. Uh, it's really unfair that your documentation status would define whether you even have safe working conditions or able to put food on the table for your family. So those are some of the things that I would absolutely want to focus on in the state legislature. So that the safety net is not adequate and should be in place so people can get food, nutrition, have those needs met and they can get back to work. Absolutely. And everything. Um, what are the complex issues that are facing our state? Uh, again, for, the, for those who don't know, go to her Wikipedia page or her own page. You, you, you're going to a postdoc at, at the Princeton Institute for Advanced Study. Oh, Einstein territory. And uh, <laughs> you came from Chicago originally and, uh, and stuff. And you married, uh, your husband's from this area or he's from Chicago too? My husband actually uh, grew up in Northern Kentucky, but oh. we met at Harvard where we were doing our PhDs. And you settled in central New Jersey, and that's when the activism started. And you said your mother has been a catalyst for that. Your activism uh, yes, I mean, my parents have always been interested in politics and kept us very informed and, um, you know, lots of dining, dining table conversations on uh, politics and what was going on in the world. So 
I think my parents definitely are very proud to see their child uh, making a contribution to my community. Yeah, well, yeah. So that leads us to the complex issues. And I, I could cocoon three questions into one. You have complex issues, you're running. What about time and commitment and, and everything else mm -hmm. to address these complex issues? Sure. So for me, public service is a calling. Um, I think that it is something that I uh, have a strength in bringing people together in assessing what the issues are that are facing the community and providing solutions. And some of the examples I can give from my time as mayor in Montgomery, when I came in, um, right the first few months, there was an anti-Muslim bias crime in Montgomery where someone left pork on a Muslim family's car. And I would say that the leadership of the township committee at that time didn't really know what to do or they didn't really have a reaction to it. And so I started a discussion group called Montgomery Mosaic and I affiliated with the local synagogue in town for the first few meetings and local churches, community organizations to talk about how to combat prejudice and to bring the community together. Mm -hmm. um, because I saw that, that those, our social fabric was deliberately being torn apart by some of our political leadership. And I would say specifically President Trump and all of those who were amplifying his messages. Mm -hmm. And that group really created a lot of ties in the community. And during my last uh, township committee meeting as mayor, it was very kind, but some of the speakers were actually talking about how I, I created a sort of town center in Montgomery for people to come together, get to know each other, and to get rid of some of that fear and distrust that people have when they don't know each other and all they hear about is mediated through negative uh, media stories or things like that. So community building is absolutely essential. And that also is coupled through uh, education. I held various seminars on the black history of our local community of native heritage, many things that people had not heard before, had not had a chance to explore. So really uh, investigating those difficult questions is something that I'm very dedicated to and it's one of my strengths and it's something that I have a track record of accomplishing in Montgomery. Um, also bringing in people who didn't who feel disengaged. I think it's very important that the public feels engaged and as a part of the system. One of the things that I did, uh, you know, in cooperation with some of the youth who came to me wanting this to be established is that I established a youth leadership council in Montgomery that has been doing excellent work getting the perspectives of the youth in Montgomery into our boards and commissions and allowing them to understand how it is that their local government works. So, you know, civic engagement and education, I think, is the building block, because if we have an educated and engaged uh, population, then they will be able to advocate for the things that matter to them, and they will be able to get the ear of their elected officials. I want to learn, and I want to get my platform issues from the community. Um, I want to hear what they need. Um, the other thing that I did is in a there was a large infrastructure project that was already well on its way in Montgomery when I became mayor, and that was a new municipal uh, center and library that was being built. And when I came in as mayor, the first thing I did is that I held a town hall for people from the community to be able to say if they were happy with the project as it was, what their feedback was. And what we learned at that meeting was that people were not so thrilled with the plans as they had been decided upon, and they didn't feel like there had been enough feedback or input from the community. So I actually put together, together a design subcommittee that had members of the planning board, zoning board, environmental commission, shade tree committee, board of health to take in all of that feedback, to design this investment in our community in such a way that people would feel a sense of ownership and pride in uh, this project. And we were able to get that off the ground. Um, and we had our groundbreaking actually in October of last year. So. That was another uh, situation where I came in, I saw a problem that people didn't have a sense of buy-in in this in investment in the community, they didn't understand what was happening, and I was able to bring people together. Um, and I think finally, it was my leadership during the COVID crisis, uh, having a background in international studies and history and literature gave me that context and understanding of how pandemics have been dealt with in the past. I started reading up all about leadership during a pandemic, what had people done at different points in history right. um, and all over the world. And I was watching very closely when the pandemic was 
really uh, spreading in China, in Iran, in Italy, before it came to the United States. And so we were very aggressive in Montgomery, shutting down our uh, municipal building and the schools before we had a single case. And I really believe that that helped us keep our infection and fatality rates to some of the lowest rates in the country. Mm -hmm. um, another issue that we were facing last year and will continue to face is renewed calls for racial justice. And, um, you know, with- But in Montgomery, is that an issue though? I mean, is it, you're talking about in, in, in District 16 or just generally, just keep that voice up about racial justice? I mean, I think it's, it's a problem in our whole country, in our whole society. Uh, and absolutely, it's an issue for people in District 16 and in Montgomery. Um, so one of the things that I did is uh, with the partnership of community members, host workshop meetings for members of the Black community in Montgomery with our police leadership and with our administrative leadership to talk about what their concerns were, to open up lines of communication and understanding. Uh, we also held a Q&A se session for the youth activists who had organized the Black Lives Matter rally in Montgomery to talk to administration and police leadership and elected officials about all of their questions about what we were doing, what we could do better. Um, so I really think that bringing people into the conversation, empowering them, understanding what their issues are, that's really my strength. And when I think about my leadership in the assembly, I would hope to have roundtable conversations with all of the mayors in the district, for example, all of the uh, religious leaders in the district, all of the business leaders in the district to think about a district wide strategy. Uh, how can we work together for this entire region to make sure that we're serving the needs of uh, the community? That leads to voices from the crowd. Um, someone who knows you said, um, where do you find the pay? Organizational, organization is, your, is your, one of your strengths. But you seem, they said you seem to have this kind of way about you that gets people to want to come together, not a nurse-like quality, but soothing. In business, you know, you can take control, but you're not intrusive. What, what would you call that alchemy? What is that? You can describe it. I think that I just try to maintain a sense of humility that, you know, I'm just one person. I'm just your neighbor and I'm trying to represent your best interests, but I can only learn learn those best interests by talking to you. Um, and you know, I don't have all you the just answers. Sold me. You just sold me. <laughs> 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 no, but look at a neutral affect, empathetic, to the point. But you're also very cogent in your words. Yes, yes. Oh, continue though. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I mean I think that it's. I try to lead by what I would want leadership to look like. I try to be that example that I would want to see, and. You know, to be honest, when I got involved or thinking about running, some people told me, well, you have to be a shark and you have to be this way. And mm -hmm. then the best advice I actually got was from a current uh, member of the assembly who said, just be yourself, yeah, be yeah. yourself. And that's really what government is at, as, at its best, is that democracy is supposed to be, you just select people from your peers to represent your interests for a certain period of time. It's not anything... I don't think we need to complicate it so much. I think we really should think about it in the, its most basic terms. And that's how I would wanna represent this district. I, I, well, I have to agree with you. And I just found in my own personal um, input is too, I, it's, it's policy, it's process, but then the politics and some of the personalities, I think do, especially on the local level, I've always said potholes don't care about party affiliation, they need to be fixed. And how does it, it ruins your car and I care about that. But yes, I, I understand where you're coming from. Another question from someone, what, kept you up at night when you were mayor of Montgomery? If you woke up, we all wake up, and sometimes you can't go back to sleep. I would say that the most difficult uh, time was really when we saw COVID getting closer and closer. And mm -hmm. that night before we made the push to close our municipal building and um, all of those things, I really had a sleepless night having no idea how bad was it going to get? How many people were going to die? How many people were going to get sick? And just that responsibility, that weight of the responsibility of serving in leadership when a very traumatic thing is, is like a slow motion disaster coming towards your community. Right. Um, so that really kept me up at night because I knew that decisions that I made could have a life and death impact on people. Uh, so I tried to always keep that front of, you know, top of mind and be empathetic about the struggles that people were going through. Um, 
another difficult day was definitely the first uh, fatality that we had from COVID-19 in Montgomery and thinking about how hurt the community was going to be and how to get that message across. So trying to be strong for the community, but also to not to, to show the human side of myself as well. So that was a balance that is difficult, but um, I'm very proud and honored that I had the opportunity to lead the community during that time. But it really brought home for me that when you're voting, one of the most important things you should ask yourself is who do you want in leadership in an emergency? Uh, because I, I think so many people especially don't really think about local politics or they only vote on presidential elections. But as we all saw in a pandemic situation, your most local leaders are the ones who have the direct impact on your life. And so um, that's something that I'm always going to carry with me. Right. Well, the rubber hits the road. Um, final question, then we can go to your bona fides. Uh, what were the first 30 days, if you could, if you won, what were the first 30 days? What would you, what, what, what precedents do you want to set down about where you stand, your preamble? Absolutely. So I, as I said, having more diverse perspectives is really important to me. So one of the things I would want to do is, um, you know, look into how to diversify appointments to state boards and commissions. That's something that I worked on in Montgomery. Uh, for example, there were no women on the planning or zoning boards when I became mayor. Uh, and so having those diverse perspectives really makes a difference. So that is something that I would really want to work on right away. Um, but I have to interrupt though. It wouldn't be woman for woman's sake though. You want that because you think you want competent people who can bring diverse perspectives. Well, you know, we need to have representation because if you don't, you're only hearing from your circle. And I'll give an example. As I mentioned, uh, you know, someone brought up to me that undocumented members of the community were afraid to get the food aid that they needed. And I mentioned this to some of the other mayors that I knew. And I kind of got this reaction like, oh, well, I've never heard that. And why would they need to be scared? And that and I realized in that moment that I was the only person amongst the people I was talking to who was not white, who had an immigrant background. And so maybe those people felt more comfortable telling me about their struggles than they would to someone else. And you know, another example, when I was sitting on the planning board as mayor, there was a, a daycare center that was being built and we had suggested that they put a shade structure in the playground. And they were kind of like, well, why do we really need to do that? We don't have that in our other uh, locations. And I had a daughter who was in preschool at that time. And so I knew how important it was when I went to pick her up at the playground that she had some shaded area to. Well, get out of the sun. So, I mean, those are just these nitty gritty situations where you see that it really is important to have those diverse perspectives because then you're representing the community. Otherwise, if it's a very small group of people who are making decisions for everyone and they don't have those experiences, they don't have that, those networks, it's not going to be really representative of what the broader community needs. I was just say you first wanted to give me the concrete nuances and explanation and not the rhetoric. I do appreciate that. And also what you talking about COVID-19 too. And I, I guess my own question before we, we have to wrap it up is when you dealt with COVID, did it help to mitigate your own the weight on your shoulders, having a plan and going forward? Does that, I guess that's really important to make you feel positive, right? And that's what you had? Yes. Yeah. I'm very thankful to the professional professionals who work for Mont Montgomery Township. We had started having meetings actually in January. Uh, just preparing for the pandemic, watching what was happening abroad, uh, preparing our EMS for what types of gear they might need. Um, but I don't think we anticipated how bad it would be. And we were, to some degree, looking for federal leadership on how this would be managed, because usually that is where pandemic uh, uh, preparation comes from. But then um, as it got closer and there were more cases, uh, again, I, I spoke with them, our health officer, our administrator, our finance officer, um, our police director about how we should approach things. And I have a lot of respect for them. Um, and it really showed me how important it is to have qualified, serious professionals working for you at every level of government. Um, so we did have a very good team. But at the end of the day, you do have to make decisions you know right. there, there's that's, options that's before you, yeah. and you kind of have to make the decision and that was tough but with the advice of um all those great professionals i, I believe we made the correct decisions for our community well so now, t tell us how people can reach you go to your website what's your plan to get out the vote go for it absolutely so you can reach me uh at my website is www.voteforjaffer.com or on Facebook at Vote for Jaffer. Uh, you can email me at voteforjaffer at gmail.com. 
And, uh, you know, I want to hear from you. What is it that you want to see from your state government? Mm -hmm. um, and in terms of getting out the vote right now, just doing lots of Zoom events and social media posts and getting to know people. Uh, but if you have ideas for, for things that you would like me to come to, to attend or to participate in, please let me know. As I said, mm -hmm. I get my direction from the, the people in the community in the district and what they want to see from their leadership, because ultimately I'm there to represent you. Right. Well, that's a skill. I mean, I, I, we can go on forever. You listen, you vet, you try to implement and everything. Um, I have 10 other questions, but we're running out of time. Well, thank you very much, Sadaf Jaffer. I got it right. Yeah. I, I get my own name wrong, so don't take it personally. <laughs> And this has been um, Breathing with Beerman, the podcast, a Princetonian Now Media Group production. We talked today to Sadaf Jaffer, running for 16th District Assembly 2021. The primary is going to be, what, June? 8th. June 8th, big day. If you want to come back on, um, we'll see where we're going. Please do. And it's been a pleasure talking with you. Great talking to you. Thank you.